Hello, my name is Shane Borza. I'm a filmmaker living in Los Angeles. I just recently lived in Sydney, Australia for three years. And it's funny, I have a lot of people ask me, why, when you're living in LA, would you move to Sydney to go to film school and to work in the film industry? Well, I applied to a few film schools in LA and uh, I got accepted at a few of them. But uh, it's at least twice as much. And I wanted to also do a more immersive program that allowed me to do more things. So the International Film School Sydney in Sydney has a two-year program that teaches writing, directing, and producing and enables you to do eight short films. And it's for less than $50,000. The LA Film School, for instance, is a one-year program in which you can only do one discipline, either directing or writing or producing, and you get to make one film. So I said, <laughs> writing, directing, and producing is better than one or the other. And eight films is better than one film, and $44,000 is a lot better than $72,000. Plus, it allowed me to be in an international environment and see how films are done in a foreign country, on the other side of the world, but still have it be English-speaking and not have any communication issues. So for all those reasons, I went to Sydney, Australia. My experience in Australia was great. It was similar enough to the US that I was able to move around and do things. I understood the systems, the you know, kilometers and kilograms and you know, weights and measures and things like that are a little different, but they're the basis of government, religion, organization, language, all those things are the same. So it, it enabled me to go to class have homework assignments, work with people on projects, have a job, and do all those things without too much difficulty. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of colloquial and societal differences which made it fun. So I had a lot of uh, interesting situations where people would say something and I'm like, I don't, don't know what that means. But it was usually more funny than it was difficult. Um, but luckily I made friends with Igor Breckenbach, who's a stunt coordinator, actor, writer, director, producer. And we worked on several projects together. And because of that, I was able to go to Stunt Academy with him and work with him on his projects. He worked with me on my projects. And we were able to work on other people's projects together. And that led to me being a part of several feature films to culminate in me writing and directing a feature film called Turbines. So on the whole, I would say it was a wonderful experience going to Australia and had a, a great time. My background in the film industry is varied. I had friends in the industry in New York City and for a long time I was a creative writer and so I was helping them develop stories and scripts and also edit scripts and then a friend of mine and I ended up deciding we were going to write a feature film together. And that was my first foray into film specifically. I also worked on some shorts and various projects. This was all prior to coming to L.A. And then I moved to L.A. and worked on a number of short projects. Uh, some of them were professional projects. And that's when I first learned how much I didn't know. Going to... Australia, I focus predominantly on being a first AD, which is kind of like the set manager. So I did that for three years in Australia, and I also did a number of short films as writer-director and then a feature. So coming back to the U.S., I have dropped AD work, and I'm exclusively pursuing writer-director credits as a filmmaker, and that's what I want to do. So I am currently working on a feature film, and I've had a short released last year, which went to a film festival, and I have another short, which will be released next year, and that hopefully will go to film festivals.
As far as the comparison of the industries between Australia and America, I didn't work on any union projects or studio projects in either. So it's difficult to compare. Uh, the U.S., especially in Hollywood, is, of course, very union-regulated. But uh, the indie, no-budget, no-money shoots are fairly similar. You have a lot of passionate people who are devoting all their time and you know, beg borrowing and stealing whatever they need to do in order to make the project. And that's very similar in, uh, in both. The Australians are very game up. They're, they're very, uh, let's go for it and I'll just call my mate and they'll come over and help us and they're very open and friendly. Uh, I think that the thing with LA, at least I've experienced almost like as an outsider, because I just moved here and I'm not from here, is that people are very professional minded and sometimes I think that's a hindrance because they feel like, well, this is how you have to do it. Whereas in Australia, it's a little more relaxed. And so it's just kind of like, oh, well, we'll just do this. Sometimes being professional minded is great because you know it's supposed to be done like this. And then the outcome is very high end. Uh, there were some times where I worked on things in Australia where if you just say, oh, we'll just do it however we're going to do it. And you might end up with, you shot it, but it doesn't necessarily look professional. But there's pluses and minuses to both of those. I think sometimes you need to just get the project done and then learn from it and maybe you can go to a higher level afterwards. Why did I go into film? I started in college being a writer and I've done that for about 10 or 15 years and it's something I always wanted to pursue and I've always loved film, but I didn't realize that film was a career or a, or a job option. I, I think logically I knew that new people have to come along all the time in order to be the crew or be the actors or, or be the filmmakers, but I didn't ever think that I could do that. It wasn't until a friend of mine went to film school and started being a filmmaker that I thought, oh, I could be a filmmaker. So it was only five years ago that I started pursuing film, but I guess in a way you'd say it was a, a lifelong goal. I worked on a lot of great projects in Australia, many of which were student productions at the film school. I made a a film one year called The Lesbian Western, which has enabled me to build my YouTube channel up to a quarter million views from almost nothing. Uh, I've gotten a Facebook page, which has over 3,000 likes, and I'm going to be releasing the film online, so hopefully that'll blow up as well. It'll give me a lot of name recognition. Uh, it played at a film festival, and I had a lot of buzz, which was great. I was a stunt guy in three features, one of which was sold... Forbidden Ground, which now is Battleground, they changed the title, and Theater of the Dead, which is a zombie film, which is being released in Australia, and Turbines, which is finishing post now and hopefully will be released next year. So those are all fantastic experiences. I get asked a lot what the secret, if there is a secret, to the success of the Lesbian Western is. And I was one of the project coordinators for a film festival in Melbourne called the Fantastic Asian Film Festival run by Monster Pictures, which is a Melbourne-based genre company. They specifically usually deal in horror films. And so there's a lot of exploitation, indie, underground, and horror type of films at the film festival. And I met a film fest, uh, excuse me, I met a director at the film festival, and he asked me what my project is that I was working on, and initially the lesbian western was titled The Broken, because all the characters are broken in some way. And then I described it as, it's a lesbian western. And he told me, don't call it The Broken. 
especially because it's a short film, you have a limited option of what you can do with it. If you say, I made a short film called The Broken, no one's going to pay attention to you. If you say, my new film, The Lesbian Western, everyone will pay attention to that. So I came back and changed the name and changed the focus of the film to reflect that kind of incendiary title. And sure enough, whether people like it or they hate it, lesbian western is something that makes people go, what is that? So it encouraged people to come up with some kind of a hook, whether it's a title or an image or a tagline or something that enables your project to stand out and then you'll get notice. The way that I came up with the idea for the Lesbian Western, even when it was called The Broken initially, was I've always really liked strong female characters, whether it's Terminator 2 or Alien or Bound or uh, anything like that. Uh, I always liked the idea of the girl hero, especially, and this is going to sound weird, but in horror films... There's usually the victim, like in Halloween, Jamie Lee Curtis, for instance, and they go from kind of the stereotypical, just regular girl who trips and falls down and is wearing high heels and runs away and screams, and not a hero, not the Arnold Schwarzenegger. When you see Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's hard to picture him as anything other than the hero. You know he's the hero. But when you see Jamie Lee Curtis on Halloween and she's a scared teenager, you don't think of her as the hero, especially when she's going against this mindless killing machine who's unstoppable. But for her to then rise to the occasion and overcome the unstoppable killing machine, she kind of transcends her role. And so that's kind of where I got the idea. I said, okay, I'm going to have the girl try and get away from the bad guy, a hero comes in, but the hero is also a girl. And then throw that basically in a blender. So that's where the idea came from.